Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, let me congratulate you on your assumption of this very important uh, function. It's a real pleasure to have you and your country uh, presiding over our deliberations and, of course, say how much we appreciated the excellent way in which uh, Thailand, uh, in the person of the ambassador, discharged this, uh, this important function. As um, uh, my dear friend Gara was just saying, let me start also by expressing our heartfelt sympathy with our incomparable host country, um, Austria, and our beautiful city of Vienna. Uh, together with the Niederösterreich and other parts of the country which are suffering the consequences of this um, extreme weather phenomenon that is affecting us all. I think the message of the Secretary General just now was reminding us uh, of the fact that in our agenda and in the many things that we are going to be discussing uh, this week, the role and the mission of the IEA is indispensable. And yes, we are at a time of unprecedented tensions and uncertainties, but of course that should not deviate us and should not make us forget the absolute importance of uh, our work here because uh, our work cannot be put on hold until these tensions ease, which we always and of course hope will be uh, the case. Let me uh, say that uh, when it comes to the role of the IEA, it is in all these areas. It is in preventing the erosion of the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons regime that has underpinned the peace and security conditions in the world. It is also um, important to make sure that nuclear safety and security prevail at times of war. It is also uh, trying to ensure that through the efficient application of science and technology through nuclear, we can um, diminish uh, poverty and difficulties around the world. Let me tell you what we have been doing um, in this past uh, 12 months and the way um, ahead. Uh, one of the uh, pressing uh, issues that are uh, in all our minds is, of course, the issue of food uh, security and the fact that more than 700 million people go to bed every night um, hungry. Uh, this is, of course, an obscenity and this is, of course, an effort that the entire UN family and uh, countries as well are trying to address. Through the Atoms for Food uh, project, which we launched together with our friends from FAO, we are trying precisely to bring uh, nuclear technologies through food irradiation, through pest insect to uh, containment technologies, uh, through um, um, soil improvement, crop improvement technologies, uh, some uh, remedy to this um, uh, global uh, crisis. I invite you to join us uh, tomorrow when we launch the scientific forum this year, where we are precisely going to be concentrating on this, on this issue uh, through the Atoms for Food uh, project. Dear colleagues, um, we are meeting for five days. Let me say something. You know, in these five days, or during these five days in the world, according to statistics, 200,000 people will be told they have cancer. And many more, especially in the developing world, will not even be told that because they don't have the means to know it. From those, roughly half are going to die. And they are going to die from cancers that could be perfectly preventable and cured. This is behind our Race of Hope initiative, which we launched in close coordination with the WHO and which is supporting countries all over the world, in particular low and middle income uh, countries where in some cases not a single radiotherapy machine exists. So this support that the IEEA is giving um, is uh, done through um, equipment, through training, and in some cases even erecting, constructing cancer centers. We need to continue counting uh, on your support for this noble um, mission. But this is not all. When we look at the um, environment and when we look at other problems that are being tackled multilaterally, like the microplastic uh, crisis, again, 
the IEA through the NUTEC Plastics Project um, is um, at the forefront of efforts that are trying to stem this uh, global uh, phenomenon. Uh, we are still remembering the days of the pandemic with those lockdowns, with those anxieties. It's not so long ago. And at that time, the IEA launched its biggest campaign of equipment support for more than 130 nations. But even those days, we knew that this was just a temporary remedy to something that needed more. And this is why we launched Zodiac, the Zoonotic Disease Integrated Action Program, which is now working in more than 100 countries. We have equipped veterinary laboratories all over the world. And you know, these laboratories right now are working on MPOX. So this um, action, this preventive action through nuclear technologies have allowed us to be ahead of the game on health crisis, um, of course, within the One Health Platform uh, in uh, the United Nations. All of these issues are crucial, but of course, one of the most important uh, matters that we are dealing with is the energy crisis compounded with the climate change uh, problems that we have. And the IAEA has been displaying also its support uh, on the role that nuclear energy as a clean source of energy can play. As you know, when we look at statistics, roughly a quarter of the clean energy which is being produced right now in the world is of nuclear origin. And we come a long, long way from not being recognized in international conferences or even rejected to what happened in the global stock take um, in Dubai just a few months ago in the COP28 where there was a global consensus, a global consensus, I repeat, from all members present there to say that nuclear energy should be accelerated. We will be working with Azerbaijan for COP29 where we expect to be continuing in this very important um, effort. Nuclear energy continues, and it's not only in the traditional way. It is also through the important contribution of new nuclear manifestations, like small modular reactors. In a few weeks, at the first international conference on, uh, on SMRs, on, on small modular reactors, will take place here, in this very room. And we will be able to gauge the state of the art in uh, this technology. Who is doing what? How can we, and especially developing countries, also can benefit from this important instrument to give uh, our energy mixes an important additional instrument to produce energy without harming uh, the environment. And this is very important. Of course, there are ways for the future as well. And fusion, uh, with its promise of um, energy, clean energy, um, in a very efficient uh, way, has always been uh, considered one of the most promising uh, scientific areas. And we have launched the World Fusion Energy Group, which is going to be meeting in Rome in November this year to bring the conversation forward. As you can see, dear friends, all these applications are active and present um, when it comes to providing a better future for all. But of course, there are the challenges. And when we think about the challenges with war going on um, in Europe and with the possibility of a nuclear accident um, uh, always uh, present, the IAEA has been present um, at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Um, already uh, 23 rotations of uh, IAEA experts are there contributing working, informing the international community of what uh, is going on. And yes, I have visited Kursk just a few uh, days ago, uh, where the situation is um, uh, serious. Saying and coming from the assumption that a nuclear power plant, a peaceful nuclear power plant, should never be attacked under any circumstances, irrespective of the place where this nuclear power plants um, are situated. And we will continue in this effort. Of course, 
when it comes to, and we mentioned that, uh, the nuclear non-proliferation regime, which is so important. Uh, we need to continue our effort. I salute the possibility and look forward to engaging with the new president of Iran and with the government of Iran in continuing in our um, indispensable efforts to give the credible assurances to the international community that that nuclear program is uh, in uh, peaceful ways and it will continue so. There are challenges ahead, but they are not unsurmountable. And I reiterate here and now my disposition to continue um, our efforts, just as we do in Syria, where for the first time in more than a decade, we are now moving forward in trying to bring clarity to some of the issues that were uh, the source of um, important concerns um, in the past. So as you can see, dear friends, in all of, uh, in all of these uh, points, the IAEA is showing its active uh, contribution um, in uh, or to the world uh, agenda. Uh, dear friends, uh, nothing uh, in this area or nothing in these uh, areas uh, is done um, uh, automatically. It all needs the workforce, the women and the men that are doing this science for um, all of us. Uh, and when it comes to that, uh, young generations, and of course, women are essential. Through the Marie Sklodowska Curie Fellowship Program, we have opened possibilities for hundreds of women that heretofore did not have the possibility, the means, the money to continue with their careers. We need to continue uh, in this effort because in the next few years, and according to the evolution of the nuclear energy uh, equation, as I described it, uh, a few million uh, technicians and engineers are going to be needed. And of course, women will have to be there. And we have opened doors to them through this program and through the Lisa Meidner uh, program, which is also addressing mid-career women uh, in the area of nuclear. Because it is not true that in these areas um, the male dominance will prevail uh, forever. All of us uh, are needed. And the example, of course, is my own secretariat, where from a meager 28% of women in the professional categories, when I started in this position, now we are at 48.5, and we are going to get to 50% very soon. So nothing is impossible when we work together and with a sense um, of uh, real commitment. So as you can see, uh, dear colleagues, from the front lines of war to the radiotherapy uh, units to the food and the protection of the environment uh, in all of these areas, this agency is and will continue to be at your service for the noble mission of keeping atoms for peace and development. Thank you very much.